The Go Radio Football Show. Subscribe to the Go Radio YouTube channel for our latest videos. Let's go! Yeah, building up to the new season, just over a month away and uh, just a couple of weeks away to the League Cup. Uh, that is with us very soon in the middle of the month. In terms of headlines today and all the football gossip, the football transfer rumours, Rangers on the brink of sealing summer signing number six as they look to get back on the Scottish title trail. And they won't be unhappy to hear that Celtic are preparing to bid farewell to Jota, who seems bound for Saudi Arabia in a £25 million deal. Sounds like a good bit of business for Celtic. A couple of great years. And now a whacking profit to go with it. It's the Go Radio Football Show. Rob McLean in for Paul Cooney uh, this week. And happy to say that I have got the legend that is Peter Grant alongside. Hi, Peter. Hi, Rob. Very pleased to be here with you. Nice to see you. You're a lot better than Paul and a lot better looking as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure he's not listening. Uh, if he is, he'll be, he'll be on the phone shortly protesting. So let's uh, work our way through all the football stories uh, of the moment. And there are plenty of them. Um, we're going to talk about that uh, summer signing number six, which seems to be about to happen for Rangers. Cyril Dessers is the player involved. It seems a, a medical has been booked um, and as long as he comes through that, then the signing will go through. 28-year-old front man. Certainly plenty of strikers coming in for Rangers. We'll talk about that in the show. Uh, and feel free to join us. Feel free to get in touch. Make your point. Make your comment on what is happening at the moment. It's all very busy for Rangers. It has to be as they look to get themselves back competitive to give Celtic a real fight for that title next season after a two in a row for the Ange Postacoglu team, of course, uh, last season was a treble. And in terms of Celtic, it seems very much, it sounds very much, Peter, as if Jota is on the way out. We have spoken it, spoken about it on the show before, uh, but it does sound, we're getting more and more detail on it now, and it does seem as if it could go through next week. Yes, well, if you're talking about that type of money, Rob, you can't knock it back, the club can't knock it back, and... Obviously, we spoke about it last week. The players' wages getting branded about about two hundred thousand pounds a week, and we've read earlier on they're talking about clauses and that it was putting his own contract. Celtic have done fantastically well because what they spoke about was if they get an offer over twenty five million, and I don't think anyone would have seen that. No matter how long you're at the football club, it's very very difficult for clubs down south to pay Scottish clubs for that hey, that amount of money, and that's where you would have thought he'd have went. Mm. The surprise is it's going to Saudi Arabia. Exactly. That's the big thing, you know. And listen, there's some obviously wonderful stars over there. I understand that, but I'm very surprised someone so young's chosen to do that. But when you look at the finances, you can understand completely. Mm. Yeah, I mean Celtic when they put that clause in the contract, probably thought they were pretty safe at making it 25 a 25 million fee. They would have been happy with doubling what they paid for Jota. You'd have thought, but this is this is quadruple, isn't it? And and as you say. If, if they do turn down a fee of 25 or over, we understand, then his wages would go up from £35,000 a week to £45,000 a week. And now he's going to £200,000 <laughs> per yeah, week. Yeah, I know, exactly. It's just, it's just shows you it's incredible. But listen, fantastic business again from Celtic. You know, we've heard, we spoke about it last week that there was a possibility that Rangers would offer them before when he was at Benfica um, to, to go to Rangers. They, they didn't need him at that particular time. They thought they had people in place and... Obviously, he went to Celtic and I thought it was outstanding. You know, it was one of the players, you know, you, you, there's a player comes and I always think there's a difference when a footballer comes to a Celtic or a Rangers. Can you handle the pressure? I thought it galvanised him. I thought he was one of these guys that could play to the crowd. You know, he could wear the jersey. The jersey was never too heavy for him. Mm. And I was really impressed with him. Disappointed, obviously, you can't see him for a lot longer, even in the Scottish game. It's a loss, you know. You, He's got a wee bit of character about him. I like all that in the football players, you know, but especially the types of players because they'll have their bad games, they'll have their good games. We had a lot more good games than they did have bad and disappointed for the Scottish game. But yet again, I keep saying it's fantastic they're getting this type of money, you know, for these players. And a great credit to Celtic. You've got to tip your hat to them that obviously they've done their work in the background and they've got a player and they're talking about the deal could work out maybe Celtic in like £17.5 million pounds for it, which is fantastic. Mm. It does raise eyebrows, doesn't it? Just because we're not used to this sort of move happening. I don't think anyone really saw this coming at all for, for, for Jota. He's been at Celtic a couple of years, one on loan, one after the that deal had been made a, a, a permanent one. But he's joining up. Uh, in that uh, Saudi Arabian Pro League with the likes of Benzema, 35, 
Conte 32, Cristiano Ronaldo 38. That That's the trend that we're used to seeing, isn't it? Players getting to a certain age, uh, winning just about everything they can, uh, and then moving on and, and getting one big last payday. But at, at his age, in his early 20s, it's unusual. I just wonder if things are, are changing. Well, I look at Neves. I'm disappointed to see him go as well um, because I think he's a top quality player could play in any of the top four, top six in England. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind of that. But yeah, again, the money will be mind-boggling for him. It's Nuno who used to be the manager at Wolves, who's there, so there's obviously a big Portuguese connection. No, 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 no half-back line. <laughs> <laughs> Espirito Santo, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So he's over there, so there's obviously a big Portuguese influx, you know, and mm. you're looking at it and you're thinking, is it going down the line a few years ago? We are talking about Whitsell and that went to Russia, I'm sure, and they were going to China and with all, and then they all come back. They went quite young and then come back after two years. Obviously, their back pockets were full of money. Mm -hmm. But you've got to come back and prove yourself again in Europe again. And maybe Jota sees that and think, well, I'll go a few years of money, can't knock it back, it's life-changing. And all of a sudden, he'll find himself maybe one of the top clubs in Europe again. You mm. never know. But as as a strange one, that one of the young ones, and I, I spoke about it off here, mm. we're talking about America in the early 80s, when it was Pele, Cruyff and that going. The New York Cosmos. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic. I went, I see the game. Mm. And it was magic seeing all these players. But you always thought to yourself, well, where did they go for here? And as you said, rightfully said, you're talking about Ronaldo, Benzema, all these sort of guys. And I know money's no object, but how's it going to be sold around the world? Mm. People talk about different problems. But how is it going to be sold around the world? Is it ever going to take the place of the Premier League? I'm not so sure. And you would imagine it's that's a long project. That's not flicking of a switch and suddenly you've got a top league, even though you've got some of the top top players, because you need the level of competition, don't you? Absolutely. And I was reading an article on it the other day and they were saying it's not going to, going to be top three teams because it seemed to be the three teams that everybody was going to, you know, and you're thinking to yourself, well, that's quite bizarre because it's only going to be a three-team league. But they're saying, no, it's going to go right through. All the teams are going to have the finance that can compete with each other that'll be an interesting one is there going to be a relegation or is it going to be one of these ones that nobody goes down mm -hmm. you know there's all these situations but we're not really aware of and for football people like ourselves we love football we love seeing players we love what top players we love watching the Champions League that's the thing that's disappointing me if we're going to lose all these players Benzema and that I can understand if they're making millions or 200 million is it over two or three years and he's been there and Absolutely. done it, everything and he's won five Champions Leagues yeah you know, so I think if you're a different Benzema, you know, if you're a younger kid in, at Real Madrid, then it's very difficult. But I think now uh, that's my only concern, you know. For these guys, you've got to tip your hat and say, OK, you were brilliant to watch. It was great for us watching these in the Tuesdays and the Wednesdays in the Champions League. Jot is not. I'm disappointed to lose them for the Scottish game. Mm. We knew we'd probably lose them sometime along the line. But you want to continue to be your best players. But yeah, again, got to say to Celtic, well done, fantastic, because... You're paying six million for someone and you get 25 million a year later. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal business. Just one more on Jota. Is the danger for him, and there's a fairly healthy compensation package involved here. So, I mean, you know, financially, it sets him up for life. One, one transfer um, and, and he's sorted. But you spoke about uh, potentially the likes of him, Neves, going there and then having a couple of great paydays, a couple of great years. Uh, and then going into one of the top European leagues again and, and basically just picking up where you left off potentially. But is the danger that you're derailed in the process when you go to somewhere like Saudi? Oh, definitely. Oh, there's there's no doubt of that because people will say, oh, you're only playing in Saudi Arabia because it's like the question was always asked about here. You know, people say, can they do it down in England? Thankfully, many guys have moved from Scotland and I've played along with a lot of them. We were saying, ah, they are only doing it in Scotland. One of the prime examples, Henrik Larson, oh, he couldn't do it uh, down at Manchester United or whatever. My United would love him. He was only there for a short period of time. Brian McClear was the first one to score over 20 goals since George Best. So all these guys went down to England and proved themselves, and there's many, many more. You know, so they used to question the Scottish League going to England, Saudi Arabia, to one of the top European teams, ones that's a chance to win it. I'm not so sure, because performance-wise, that's always a question mark, even the people that's looking at them. OK, he's doing really well here, but he's playing in this league against X, Y and Z. But who, listen, who knows what they're going to do, how many players are going to go? Because let's be honest, none of them are going there for the league. No. You know, they're going there for the money. So yeah. we understand that wholeheartedly. So how many more players, top quality players, are they going to be able to steal out these leagues? That's my concern. Because obviously we all love watching the Champions League with mm. the best players in it. And I hope we don't lose all that. Yeah, I mean, they've obviously traditionally 
uh, it's been over 30s going to leagues like like China and, and well over and, the 30s and, and, for things yeah, like that yeah, exa- right. exactly so maybe as we said right at the start of this chat maybe this is this is the change they're going to be signing players more at their peak uh, to to really try and build a top league yeah they are because they're talking about the stadiums wise they're going to be world class stadiums for all the clubs so they've got the attraction they'll be able to build training facilities as we know because finance is not going to be a problem to them that's my concern because then it will be the, the young, top quality players who we're talking about Declan Rice or something, maybe getting two or three hundred grand a week. Mm. All of a sudden, if this would be maybe last year, maybe the Saudis would bring in for somebody like Declan Rice and instead of offering the hundred million, right? Okay, we'll give you two hundred million. And instead of Declan getting three or four hundred thousand pounds a week, we'll give him a million pounds a week. And that's what I'm a wee bit concerned of because money is no object to them. Mm. Let's be perfectly honest with you. And it's very, very, very difficult because you see the way managers are treated, you see the way players are treated when their contracts are up. Mm. You know, all these different things that get used as a piece of meat at times. So you can understand that side of them. And people talk about loyalty. And I'm a big one. And as I said to you, you're always playing for the badge on the front. I keep saying it. It's because players come and go, managers come and go. We understand that, but there's a way to treat people. And I hope it doesn't become a cattle market. That's what you're hoping for, that people can go. If they go there, I'm hoping it's still the senior ones at 33, 34, 35, yeah. and maybe getting that payday. Let us look at the cream of the crop and try and keep them in Europe, the, the best leagues in Europe, and hopefully we can all still enjoy the Champions League to the standard that is. You're with the Go Radio Football Show, Peter Grant with Rob McLean on a Monday evening, quarter past five. And uh, let's talk Rangers now, having spoken about Jota for a while there, and it is a fascinating story uh, for sure. And actually, why, let, before we speak about incoming at Rangers and that looks like it's going to be half a dozen, maybe as early as uh, tomorrow or the next few days, uh, certainly. Um, let's talk about uh, Malik Tillman, who uh, seemed as if he was going to be, uh, having been on loan with Rangers last season, uh, seemed as if he was going to be coming back as a, as a permanent signing. There was an option, it seemed, for Rangers uh, to sign him for, for £5 million. Well, what seems to have happened, Peter, is that Bayern Munich have, have had the power to, to basically rip up that agreement, give Rangers a million pounds in compensation, and then sell him for double to a, a, a team in, in England. Well, listen, great credit to Rangers. Yet again, we talk about it. They brought in a young player. And listen, we, we sat on the show a lot last season, and people were critical of him, because I think at times he was getting asked to do a job you know, worrying about her defenders running off him and he had to chase them all the way back instead of playing him in an area of the pitch where he could influence the game. And I was really impressed with him. I thought he'd all the stature, he's a young man, he's got very good feet. And I always thought he was very creative, you know, and I just thought he needed a, a centre forward really up the pitch with him because I thought the, the quality that he had, and, he, and he's only going to get better at that age. And I thought for £5 million, I thought it was a great bit of business whether Rangers could afford to have done that at that particular time. I'm not so sure. They were probably maybe hoping that he was going to do as well as he could and then be able to pay that mm. in the summer. But that's always the worry when you don't have people signed up. Yeah. If they come and do well for you, there's an opportunity. And look, they're talking about Brighton. So David and, Weir, and Brentford, yeah. Uh, yeah, so David Weir. Yeah. What's yeah. Brighton? Yeah. Rangers connection. I'm sure he's watched Rangers closely. Stephen, Stephen Presley's at Brentford, isn't he? Uh, the Stevens there as well. So you, you you know, so you look at that and you think these guys are no they're football guys, you know, mm. they like to watch quality players. And obviously David and that maybe watching Rangers and watching the likes of, you know, Tillman, even when he goes back and say, well, for us, for £5 million. And he could play because he can handle the ball exceptionally well. He's a young man. And a lot of these clubs do that because they've got their finance. I mean, £5 million down the road is like signing somebody under 16. Mm. He's also got the physique for a 21-year-old, yeah, yeah, doesn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. And they can do that and they can sign them. And he doesn't need to rush into their team. And believe it or not, he could because he's got good feet. Mm-hmm. He can handle the ball well. Obviously, he can up another level again. But he's only going to get better. He was at Bayern for a reason, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And he's only going to get better. And I, I just think it'll be disappointing for Scottish game because I, you want all the best players here. You want as many good young players here and older senior players, top quality players. I mean, I like, I like say, Arfield, so I'm not saying it should all be young players. But when you bring someone in, you know, and that's when you've got to see Ranger scouting, to be fair to them, with the Tillman situation. They've done very well on that. And I think that's what guys are working really hard at now. That Even though they've got good sides, are looking to improve all the time and it used to go to the certain clubs to get certain players from now well thankfully because the, both teams have done well in Europe and the respect of their names are out in Europe again in the Champions League and what I'm not saying the results wise but people are willing to let their younger players go there and try and establish yourself and see if they can perform under the pressure which comes we're playing with a Celtic or a Rangers but you, there's not many clubs you can send a young boy out 
and you can see them playing in that atmosphere are they types of atmosphere that these boys and the pressure that these boys have got to play as they do in Glasgow and to be fair Celtic Rangers done very well at that over the last few years It's interesting isn't it looking in from the outside we thought we knew what the, the Tillman story was for Rangers we thought it was fairly cut and dried he was on loan uh, there was an option to buy and if Rangers came up with a 5 million that was it but, but it's interesting I mean yes they get the, the compensation they get a million pounds uh, out of it but Rangers are not going to pay 10 million for, for Tillman, whereas for a club like Brighton or Brentford, it's almost reaching into your back pocket. Well, I, exactly. I mean, we're talking about the boy, young boy Colville going to Brighton as well from Chelsea. He's hardly played any games. And at the end of the day, they're talking about him going for 40 million as a reserve team player, because that's what you would call him at Chelsea. Um, and that shows you the types of money these guys have. So, 5 million to them would be like 500 grand to somebody up here. Mm. Not even that up no. here. You know what I mean? So, the problem you have with taking people on loan. As always, as Celtic had it with Jota, mm -hmm. Carter, Varkas. Thankfully, both of them ended up signing for Celtic. But that's the problem you have when you're successful and doing well, and the boys are and watched on the television all the time, or the people's at the game scouting the games and they're playing in Europe and they're all performing to a good level. Listen, it's very, very difficult then because once you get into a bun fight, unfortunately, financially, if it's down south, they're going to blow you away. Now the biggest problem you've got is you've got sort of right there now, even yeah. for your younger ones. Yeah. So there's there's another problem you're going yeah, to have. Yeah, but if you lose them, you're going to get a packet. So. Uh, well, that's the thing. You're hoping that your players, and that's why sometimes you've got to be brave enough to gamble on off the other club, because, listen, there are two clubs involved. Some teams don't want to sell them because they think there's a player in there and they think if he goes and does well, the price that we're looking for could double, treble, whatever. And that's exactly what's happened. You know, like see Tillman, obviously someone's off instead of the five million Rangers were willing to put down. They're like, OK, we'll give you a million pound, but he's going for 10 million to the Premier League in England. Rob McLean, Peter Grant talking football for the next 40 minutes. The Go Radio Football Show. The countdown to the new season is underway. Let's go! Cheers, Chris. And another travel update uh, on the way before too much longer. That uh, much talked about and marathon move of Mason Mount to Manchester United, but it's just quite a lot of M's in the same <laughs> sentence. Uh, seems as if it's uh, going to happen now, Peter. It's uh, been, We've been getting a bit bored with it because it's, there have been so many updates on uh, will he, won't he, when will it happen? It does sound like Mason Mount's going to be swapping I Chelsea for Man U. Yeah, yeah. I really do. I'm surprised Chelsea are allowing him to go. I know they've got a lot of players on that area of the pitch, but he's one of their own. He's a young man, and he, I, I've always been really, really impressed when I've seen him playing. A new job for Steven Gerrard. It's just gone uh, across the bottom of the screen there. Uh, I did wonder you? why that. I think that's finance. <laughs> <laughs> might, might it? Might it be? I see. I see that, that some in terms of headlines down south as well. Roy Hodgson um, has been taken on again by by Crystal Palace. I thought I thought there was somebody new coming in there, but uh, um, it's going to be Roy continuing as the as the manager at Palace. Uh, listen, if you're going with what you've done last season. He mm. thoroughly deserves it. Yeah. You know, and if he wants to do it, he's a big Crystal Palace supporter, even as a youngster. So it's fantastic for him. But I thought what they'd have tried to do there was maybe they've got someone there who they feel could maybe bridge that and maybe learn an off-right at this moment in time. Yeah. I think it's Paddy McCarthy that does the 23s there, and Paddy's been there for a long, long time. So maybe they're saying to him, well, you're going to have an opportunity to manage this football club, so stick by Raleigh and look, watch mm. what he does and how he manages and how he coaches and whatever. And that'd be a fantastic idea. But I'm delighted for that, Roy, because he's a right good football man and it just shows you age doesn't matter. I always believe that. Age shouldn't matter. It's the quality of the coach and the manager that there, should manage. There we go, Peter. There's that. So it's the Saudi Arabian club, El Etifak, uh, which is one you could get badly wrong, <laughs> uh, to be honest, have appointed Stephen Gerrard as their new head coach. Is another one? He knocked back a couple of weeks ago. So obviously he's been playing the poker game. Ah, exactly. Because um, I think he knocked it back a few weeks, went, travelled over, all the pictures with him over there and whatever, went to see it and then that went dry and Stephen came out and said that himself. So obviously they've come back and added yeah. a few other knots on to the end of it. Listen, it's an interesting one and I know other guys have got an opinion on it. But when you're out at work, you want to work. You don't want to go mm. dry. You want to keep your, your coaching and working with players it's very very difficult no matter where it is mm -hmm. and I think people are questioning the fact oh he's going for money and whatever Stephen's got to get back in like everyone else we're all desperate to work we're all desperate to enjoy because we can't replace playing the only way you can replace playing is being coaching or managing or whatever you're in amongst the players and you're talking about the game and watching the game and wanting to improve he's going out there and I have no qualms with that I just you watch all these European managers they go everywhere you watch international managers, mm. they turn up and they're all in different countries, managing different countries. And then we talk, we're critical if someone goes abroad and works and we think, oh, he's went there for money. 
So what well, if he's going for money? Exactly. Uh, the bottom line is, it's an experience. Whether it becomes good, bad, or different, it may be taking further away from that Liverpool job if that's the one he's been looking for all this time. Maybe take him a little bit further away from that. Mm. I know the fans wouldn't think that, but it may be take him that way if people are looking, well, what's his credentials now? Aston Villa didn't go particularly well, done well at Rangers for a period. You know, OK, the Aston Villa didn't work. Does he need to go to the Championship? The Championship is completely different. That's not coaching in the respect of because you're going for a Saturday and a, a, a Tuesday predominantly every week. So there's very little coaching gets done on the coaching field because of the amount of travelling and the amount of games you play. So sometimes it can work out either way. And listen, it's interesting to go and see him working abroad, but I have no qualms with the mm. guys going and working abroad, Rob, so good luck to him. wonder if they're looking for a couple of commentators in the South Africa, <laughs> in, the, in the Saudi Arabian <laughs> Pro League. for a couple are of players. Are you, are you available? <laughs> <laughs> if, no, we, could, we could just nip back and forth, couldn't we? I was looking at your phone number coming up there. I was like, <laughs> where's that from, Saudi? <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, spoken already about Jota and his plans to head to that, that Saudi uh, Pro League. Um, I've got a follow-up question on that for you in a minute, but interestingly, uh, to day uh, fixtures emerging um, in terms of the, the women's football season in Scotland the women's Premier League uh, when it gets underway Glasgow City are going to begin their defence of the Scottish title at home to a, a hip side intriguingly now managed by their own former interim head coach Grant Scott uh, City won the SWPL for a 16th time on a dramatic final day ahead of Celtic and Rangers. Runners-up Celtic's opener on Sunday 13th of August is away to Craig Feroz's newcomers, Montrose, who've enjoyed back-to-back -back promotions. It's been some rapid rise for them. Uh, New Rangers head coach Joe Potter takes her side to face Spartans. Debbie McCulloch's Edinburgh side uh, went unbeaten in their final 10 games of last season and they'll hope to continue that momentum against the team who eventually uh, finished third under Malky Thompson. Uh, Celtic Rangers games, of course, attract massive crowds, as you would expect, and they did last season, uh, but the Glasgow rivals don't meet in the league until Sunday the 22nd of October. SWPL fixtures out uh, today. We were speaking earlier about Jota. Uh, it looks like it's a, a deal of around £25 million. Uh, and as Peter was saying, uh, two great years out of Jota. And then a whacking profit for Celtic as well on top so uh, that is great business but I wonder if, if uh, any Celtic fans out there are wondering about Cameron Carter Vickers who's who's come the same route that uh, that loan season firstly with Celtic then it was turned into to a permanent deal and like Jota he's very much in the in the shop window uh, Celtic fans wouldn't want to be losing him as well Rob I've said many times on here what we want is Rangers had it the year before with Calvin Bassey and their players were doing exceptionally well in Europe and got probably a lot more money than they thought they would ever mm. get for the players, you know, went out to Joe Rebo and whatever. And I'm saying the biggest thing for me is you want people clamouring for your players because it means they're doing well. It means the club's been successful. You know, unfortunately, Celtic's lost Ange as well. They replaced him with a fantastic manager in Brendan, but they lost Ange. They've lost Jota, another guy who's been fantastic. But it's only getting done because the club's doing exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying, I hope that everybody's chapping the door. All the top clubs are chapping the door for the Celtic players because it's not great if you lose them, of course. Fans worry, Of don't course, they? of course. But listen, we, with the Henry Larsons, the Jimmy Johnson, with yeah. all these yeah. guys, you know what I mean? So unfortunately, you can't hold on to them forever more. But the thing for me is it means they're doing their job right. And that's why I'd say to the Celtic supporters, like anyone else, enjoy every moment you have with them at this moment in time because you never know when it ends. And it's no use feeling sorry because we're all disappointed we lose heroes. There's no doubt of that. But the big thing for me is hopefully that's going to continue in the respect of that people are wanting the players because it means the club's doing something right. We're bringing top quality players in that other clubs want. You can see how, how long has it been since Rangers Saints has sold somebody apart from Bassey for a mm -hmm. lot of money. It's not because you have to be successful. Mm -hmm to sell players. That's why the Jotas and that are going to Celtic would never have dreamed they were getting 25 million after two years. There's absolutely no doubt, no, no matter how well he played. So you're hoping all these players are getting the door chapped. And at the end of the day, Celtic maybe get to stage and say, no, we're not accepting that. And that that'd be brilliant. That'd be even better. But we know what it is now. If you're getting top dollar for them, 
you've got to accept it. But the most important thing for me is it means they've been really successful and playing really, really well. And that's all I care about, going to watch them and seeing them and being successful. And then it gives you more money to hopefully that you can add and bring quality in again. Yeah. And that's what you've got to try and do. And that's, consi- that's what you've got to do consistently. But you never is going for rules. Would they have thought if they went anywhere else apart from Manchester United or Leeds? Mm. So we, we always look at our own clubs. But your top players, unfortunately... When they're playing well, clubs are always going to be champing the door. And I'm, as I say, I hope it's the f- full starting 11 or the full 18 that's going to be involved at Celtic that mm. people are champing and asking questions because it means they're doing something right and long may that continue. And hopefully somewhere along the line you can be able to hold on to them. And I guess in the case of Cameron Carter-Vickers, the, the fact that he was out missing, having an, having surgery at the tail end of last season, uh, you go off the radar a bit at that point, don't you? And, and I'm not sure when he's back, when he's when he's back into the full yeah. pre-season training thing. So that might guard against a move at this stage. Well, listen, Carter Vickers has been excellent. And, and listen, I, I'm one of these ones, I, it's like somebody going in trial, you know, come and see him. And I'm thinking, well, you've seen him long enough. You know what Carter Vickers can do. You know that the injury's not career-threatening. You know it's not that sort of injury he's got. So if you're interested in the rehabilitation programme yeah. that goes through, now people are still wanting to pay the money. There mm. is no doubt of that. Listen, I'm hoping these guys are here for a long, long time. You know, as I say, long well, may that continue. You're hoping he gets back fit and keeps up the quality that he's shown because mm. he's been an outstanding leader. I was amazed that... I, I don't think he was nominated, was he? I don't think he yeah. was one of the four nominations for Player of the Year. Absolutely. Uh, which was, what, but it was difficult to quibble with the three Celtic players who were in the nominations, but, but I, th- I think he is one top well, player. He was outstanding. You know, there's absolutely no doubt of that. But Rob, I was down in England for a long time, and this is what I'm talking about. A lot of people wouldn't have touched Carter Vickers. They think he's too small for a centre half. Mm-hmm, yeah. All that down in England. And that's I'm talking even the championship teams that I struggle to because they think you need to be six foot four, you need to be this, that, and the next thing. And great credit to Kid, because I watched them a lot when I was down in England. And you thought you know he could defend, he was and he's one of the ones he's got better on the ball, his use of the ball is going to be I know there's a great clip of Ange when he gives the ball away at St. Mirren, all that sort of thing about mm. what you're trying to do, you know, play at your strengths. And that's the one thing he does. He plays to his strengths. He's, he's a great leader along with Callum, and Joe Hart. I thought they're the guys that sort of lead that group. because it's fine of the team. Yeah, it's very difficult now because you've got players coming from all over the world to come and play at your club. You know, and it's different than the other day when it was 95%, if not 99%. It was all sort of just guys outside Glasgow. You know, so mm. we all knew the same things. We didn't need to go and visit somebody and make sure they were okay and whatever to like the cadet and Van Hoydon and Tom and all that started coming. That was a slightly different for us. So we used to make sure they were okay. So there's a lot more goes in mm-hmm. to that team bonding. And Callum and Joe Hart and Carter Vickers have been massive for that. And I think that's why Celtic have been so successful. Never mind their quality on the pitch, their quality off the pitch also. It seems as if Rangers uh, are on the brink. In fact, I did see a mention that the medical might be happening today for Cyril Dessers, uh, set to be Michael Beale's sixth summer signing at a cost of around about £4 million. He's 28 years old. He's a Nigerian international striker um, and he's expected to sign a four-year deal after leaving the Italian team uh, Cremonese. Uh, So he follows on from uh, the signings Rangers have already made since the end of last season. Uh, that's goalkeeper Jack Butland coming from Crystal Palace, former England international. Uh, the Norwich midfielder Kieran Dowell, is it Dowell? Is yeah, that how you pronounce yeah. it? Uh, joining up with his former teammate, teammate Todd Cantwell at Ibrox. Dutch striker Sam Lammers, who's come from another Italian team, Atalanta. Uh, 23 year old right back, come from Chelsea. He's been out in a lot of loans. Uh, Dujon Sterling. Um, and Abdallah Sima, who's a 22 year old, he's a Senegalese international on loan from Brighton for the season and uh, he played for Slavia Prague against Rangers in the Europa League in 2021. Uh, so he's a forward player as well. We're, we're taking great care in calling these guys forward <laughs> players, aren't, aren't we? Because it's so difficult in the modern game to, to classify uh, because he could play central, he could play wide, he could play off the front potentially. Well, exactly. They play like this front three now, but it can be a, like Liverpool play a narrow front three so they're trying to look after the back the two central defenders of someone's playing, so they play the, the, the wide players inside and let the full-backs, like, and that's why you've got Trent Alexander, you had Andy Robertson with so many assists when it was Sani and Salah and Firmino. So clubs are like that now, and obviously Michael was brought up on that, watching that and working at Liverpool, so yeah. maybe it's a similar way he wants to play, get more followers. But listen, the boys he's talking about, like I said, Dessers were talking about Cremonese. That's, if, if I'm right, I think he scored nine or ten goals last season. 
And if he did do that with Cremonese, because I used to watch them a bit because Jack, big Jack Henry went there and yes. So I used to watch them. And I'm thinking, that, that's great goal scoring. You know, with a team that's getting relegated. Mm. You know, and you, you think that because there's not a lot of chances created and they never won a lot of games. You know, so mm. to score that amount of goals, it shows you've got a little bit of quality as well. And we looked at shapes that they've played and the sort of set up of the team, they play playing between the full back and the centre half. And Michael done that against Celtic. So it would be like to have that wee bit of pace between the full back because Celtic played that slightly different one with the full backs in. So they were down the side of the, especially in the game, they won 3 0. So all these things he's looking to build up, but they'd like to see Dowell and that you spoke about. You talk about Cantwell and Raskin previous to that. Mm. The, the two excellent signs have worked out really well for him. Um, and we said that at the time. It's big, a whole new team, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, big Jack Butland's an outstanding goalkeeper. We worked with him at Birmingham. Barry obviously was a teammate of his. And he got an injury, a scaphoid injury. But he was a top, top quality goalkeeper. He was in England early, even when we were at Birmingham at that mm. particular time. And he's got all the attributes. The only thing, again, is maybe the amount of game time he's had. I don't know if that affects goalkeepers as much as outfield players. Yeah. You know. But let's be honest, if these guys were playing at their maximum and playing every week, we wouldn't be able to afford them up no, here. No. And that, that is, There's got to be a reason that's why right. they, they and come that, here. That, that's a fine line. It's like Dowell, he's a top quality player as well. There is no doubt of that. But yet again, you look at last year with Norwich, where, OK, maybe the Myers not left him out in a couple of games or whatever, but there was injury problems as well. Kimar Roof, at the period of time he's been up here, there's no doubt about his ability. He's a quality player, right. you know, but unfortunately he's, he's got to go on the... And maybe that's why they've changed the medical side again, because they brought a, a new doctor, if I'm right, it was there with Stephen, Stephen Gerrard before, yeah. so they brought him back. I think Stephen turned him to Aston Villa, so they brought him So they're probably maybe looking at that now and think, well, we need to get on top of this because we need to have these players available. And then, it, you know yourself, Rob, all the managers want is all their players available. So I've got top quality round about your group, you want them all available, it's not a problem for a manager to manage top quality mm -hmm. players. Yeah, you've got to leave some out, so be it, but you'd rather be fit so you can have that squad that's strong enough you can change it at any time and maybe the Rangers are looking at that now. It's interesting to see uh, some of those players coming in. So Dessers is a, is a striker, is a forward, forward player. Uh, Sam Lammers, the, the Dutchman, he, he's a forward player. Uh, Sima is as well. And, and Michael Beale just wants attacking options, doesn't he? Because he, at, at times last season, he seemed starved of options. Maybe uh, Morelos wasn't fit enough, sharp, sharp enough, um, and he and he was really struggling to to fill those attacking areas. And he looked across the city at Celtic, and and Ange Postecoglou um, was choosing from maybe six or seven for the front three. Yeah, well, I, I like Cholak. When I've seen, uh, I like somebody that puts the ball in the back of the net. And I think we've got to be fair to that kid. Every time you've seen him. He put the ball in the back. People maybe say, as I said before, maybe link up plays and all this or that. They've always got faults. They wouldn't be, as I say, at Celtic or Rangers, and that's not being disrespectful. That's fact, mm. you know. And but he scored goals in a team that wasn't playing well, and he, his record was very, very good. But he's looking at that. And you, some giveaways. Uh, obviously, Morello's last game. He talked about the, the the dynamic of the team. Didn't he work as hard when the period he went on? How it died a little bit. But I've been saying that the full season. Once you let Gio Van... He cost the manager his job. Yeah. Van Bronckhurst his job. We've not been fit, you know, and then not been available for a European tie. And I've said that, and I don't want to go over that again, but he let them down badly the last few... I believe, personally, a, a couple of European games, big performances uh, against Dortmund and whatever, he was outstanding. But apart from that, it was too and far between, you know, and, and then the big games back here. He'd, you know, he, top strikers here, Celtic and Rangers strikers, who they judged against each other. Mm. How many goals he scored? It's one year leagues, one year cups, need any do many of them. And so I think it's good riddance for him. And I think you can see Michael's doing it completely different in the respect. He wants energy, he wants power in there, and he wants that, as you say, to create chance. Because he's got players like Cantwell and that all who mm -hmm. can create Dowell, who can create chances. They all can, but let's not be kidding, they can create chances, but you need someone who's going to make their dart and runs. And I think the way he's looking and these types of players he's bringing, that's what he's looking for. Yeah, he, want, he wants attacking threat from, from all areas and, and from all angles, doesn't he? Because uh, at times, um, if, you, if, you kept, if you kept a close eye, a close watch on Cholak, then Rangers w weren't going to be scoring because there wasn't enough threat coming in off the sides. Absolutely. And the thing is, all the top teams, people talk about possession. Possession, Rob, you know, you've watched the game as long as I've played it as well and whatever. Everybody looks to pass forward. But to do that, sometimes you need runners. It's okay making the pass. People say, go and make the pass and make these guys run. But people want to come to feet. So many strikers want to come to feet now. It's very, very difficult. But the players you've got, 
I want to see if he goes into midfield and he turns and he plays your striker and your striker's running beyond. It makes it so difficult. And that's where Kyogo is different from everybody else. Mm. Kyogo's brilliant at it. I, I still believe Celtic should pass the ball forward quicker at times. Quicker because he's already making that last right, uh, line run. And you think, go on, play him and we make a wee safe pass. And I'm thinking, and it's not down to lack of quality in the midfield players because they've got that quality, but they've maybe went with that. And you can see sometimes Kyogo gets frustrated. You know, and that's what I think Rangers are looking for. They're looking for someone that's going to go beyond, and they've they've not really had that threat, as you say, getting in behind the opposition. The opposition being quite comfortable with Rangers playing in front of them without getting hurt in behind. And that's need some great results right through his period he was there. Yeah. But when it came to the big games from the count, they never had enough of that. And he started off at a serious disadvantage as well when he came in to do the job. But he's going to be making it seems maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Very soon, by the sounds of it, his sixth summer signing serial, Dessers, is on his way to Rangers. It seems uh, a £4 million signing. Nigerian international striker, ex of Cremonese. The Go Radio Football Show. The countdown to the new season is underway. Let's go! Cheers, Chris. Go Radio Football Show. And uh, we're into our last uh, fifth. 15 minutes uh, Mark Guidi uh, with us on the show tomorrow night 5 till 6 join us uh, then it's Peter Grant uh, who is giving us the benefit of his wisdom uh, this <laughs> 60 minutes I use all those terms very loosely uh, absolutely. Uh, we're talking Rangers at the moment lots of business being done they have to be doing business they have to be building a whole new team because gone are the likes of Kent Morellis McGregor Arfield well, Helander's not really been around much in the last while. Horrendous injury issues. Uh, was a big player when he first arrived, uh, but he is history now, as all those players are. And it's a big rebuild. There's going to be no Malik Tillman. We spoke about that earlier on. Uh, he was on loan from Bayern last season, but he won't be back. Uh, incoming, of course, Butland, Dowell, Lammers, Sterling, Sima, and Dessers looks to be next on the list. Uh, next one done for uh, Michael Beale. Others too, the likes of uh, English defender Jonathan Panzo, Nottingham Forest, 22 year old centre back or left back. That sounds a bit like Calvin Bassey uh, in terms of that uh, option to play in either position. He was on loan at Coventry uh, last season. There is other interest in him, but he is one that Rangers are targeting by the sounds of it, as they are with the 24-year-old Ecuadorian midfielder Jose Cifuentes, uh, who could be edging closer to a move to Rangers after being left out of his Los Angeles team at the weekend. They lost to Dallas in the MLS. So those could be two names on the list to add to the ones that Rangers already have. Danilo's getting a strong mention as well, the Brazilian striker who's at Feyenoord. He's been making noises about wanting uh, to get that move pushed through. He's valued around £5 million. Don't think Rangers have offered that much so far. 14 starts last season, 12 goals. So uh, well able to make an impact off the bench, it seems, is Danilo. But what strikes me about this, uh, and we saw what Ange Postacoglu did in his first season when he rebuilt Celtic, uh, Michael Beale's going to have to do pretty much the same thing by the sounds of it absolutely and we said that we spoke about it last season it wasn't just your 11 on the pitch it's the guys that's in the, you can change and that's the big thing that Celtic had last year the boys on the bench all could affect the game and I, I look at it and people always say that to you when you're a manager or a coach what do you look at you say well you know they're probably they're starting 11 but how can they adjust and especially nowadays which I don't agree with the five substitutes because I think it's too many far too many um, but they've got five substitutes so you can change half a team during it so Celtic always had that upper hand they never lost that energy at that particular time they managed to keep most of their players fit for most of the season and that was a big big plus especially the way Ange wanted them to play and obviously no qualms of changing probably Callum McGregor your back four and your goalkeeper was the only guys that never get changed in every game you know everybody else got changed mm -hmm. and the tempo never dropped you know, and that, that's so important if you're playing in a certain style and you want to play on the front foot. And Michael's looking at that now, he's hoping that other boys come back from injury. We talked about Roof uh, for one, and, and obviously Stephen Davis is still here, who will be very important, never mind anything else. I know he's got the injury, but he'll still be a very, very important player for Rangers with round about the place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be important for them, but he want all these guys fit. He want to keep the new boys, get them in the door and show them what Rangers is, uh, is all about. And as you say, I think he needed that change because you spoke about, I don't know, is it five, six, seven mm. players that went out? So you've still, even though you've brought five, six, seven in, it's still bringing you back to the yep. same size of squad. Mm -hmm. uh, so I still think there is another. And Barry spoke about it, Barry Ferguson spoke mm -hmm. about it, and he said he thought it needed 10 players. Right. Well, it looks very much as if yeah. it's going to be that. Mm -hmm. you know? so, 
but it's always the quality and listen it's great for the Scottish game you know Rangers will be thinking oh there's a wee bit of unrest at Celtic there's a change there and how does Brendan play different for Ange and whatever you know there's mm. a wee bit of chink there you know a light there that we can maybe grab onto because there's so much going on at Celtic as well they're doing a, a new rebuild so all these things Hearts and Hibs are talking about fighting over players in Aberdeen the three of them going for the same players mm. you know because they you know, roughly play the same wages which is great for the Scottish game because we all want a strong league and we want the best players and we want young players we want older players to play exceptionally well so we can watch the games in excitement and that's what you want to do and listen to do that you have to have teams that's going to be going for every game hammer and tongs every game and and listen, like we're all excited about the new season just been around the corner. Well, what's really exciting um, and intriguing, I guess, is how Brendan Rodgers approaches the job second time around because he's coming in with Celtic at an incredibly high level in terms of domestic football. I mean, making a making an improvement in Europe is obviously a target to to be more competitive, pick up more points in the in the Champions League group stages. But domestically, you can't do much better than than the the clean sweep. That, that Celtic did last season so when, when Ange has been so successful with that style of play how much do you change it if you're Brendan Rodgers? Well it will be different because Brendan plays differently mm-hmm. there is no doubt of that I mean Brendan never played with the full backs inside he may do that continue with that he may continue with that depends the players you have he's cute enough he's a very intelligent manager coach he knows the players he have and that, that's how his team will play he'll have an idea of how he wants to play he'll look at it and say have I got that type of player he may be not, so he maybe have to adjust slightly. But I still think there'll be typical Celtic. You will want gun ho, they will want to go and score goals more than the opposition. They'll know when to keep possession, they'll want everybody to be comfortable in possession, they'll want to create chances, you know, and get after the ball as quickly as you can. That's not going to change because people think last year was the first time Celtics ever pressed the ball. We used mm. to get help to press the ball 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And the teams before us were always, as soon as the opposition get it, try and get it off them as quick as you possibly can. So it's nothing new. They were maybe better at it than all of us, but that's what that's what mm. it's always been. So that's never changed. So it's not as if we're inventing the wheel. But it's just that question of how much, yes, you you, you put your own imprint on it and Brendan yeah. Rodgers will, but how much do you, 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 don't do be you stupid. run the risk I, again, of changing you, you it too don't, much? You don't be stupid, Rob. You know what you've got. You know, if you can, your, certain things he's going to tweak. Don't think everybody's going to change position, but they're asked to do. That's not going to happen. He's going to put wee tweaks in here. You know, you'll notice it because he's certainly the style that Celtic played. You'll notice that the players maybe be asked to. Brendan maybe see something in another player who's already done a certain type of job mm-hmm. with Ange. Because all of a sudden it changes right away. You have no jota. So there, yeah. Yeah, right away it changes mm-hmm. right away. So there's a slight change there. Does he play with a left-footed player on the left wing instead of a right-footed player? Mm-hmm. So there's all these wee things that you're going to have to look at. And tactically, he'll want to do that. Yes, you want to do well in Europe. But the bottom line is the most important thing, and never let anybody kid you any different, is winning the Scottish League. That is the most important thing you have to do. Mm. Yes, we have to try and do better results-wise. Last year, I really enjoyed watching Celtic, even though... They didn't get the results. There are certain results they should have gotten. There's other times they didn't play particularly well. But I must admit, they went to try and win the games instead of just saying, well, we'll hold on and hopefully we're going to get something out of this. That's the change that I felt Ange brought last year because we all questioned with the full-backs going in, are they going to get done in the counter? And it happened a few times with the full-backs being so far in and leaving them exposed. But it was better to watch because they had a go. I know it's no nice when you get beat 5-1 or whatever, of course, but... Having a go to try and win the games is important. Yes, that's something that Brendan will look at as Europe. But the most important thing, let's not put that side show on. The side show is you've got to win the league here. That is a fact. Uh, Celtic uh, still in the market, it seems, for the Korean winger, uh, Yang Hyun Jun. Uh, he, he says himself he's still hoping to be signing for Celtic. His club, Gang Won, um, said they would actively help him uh, get a move into a, a European league. I don't think they've quite come up with the goods uh, and he's even offering, he's quoted as offering to get himself involved financially and in getting a deal to, to go through. So he must be really keen to come. Um, but you, you just wonder, uh, I mean, the, 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 the pathway into the Japanese and Korean market was particularly the Japanese market, was, was fairly obvious when Ange Postacoglu was here. Uh, I just wonder whether that is going to continue to be a route that Celtic go down with, with Ange gone. Oh, I think no doubt of that because, listen, Celtic will have to put something in place now, whether it's Ange, whether it's Brendan, whether whoever the next manager is or the, the ones prior, they'll have something in place that everything doesn't change because the manager moves. 
So they'll have a, obviously their recruitment's been excellent, you know. So as I said to you, talking about the money they're getting for Jordan, that, that proves that. So mm. they're always looking to improve, and you're always thinking, if we lose this player, if we get somebody to come in here, you know, because now that that's even taking part with the types of managers you bring in, you know. So the manager's got to suit the style. What is that's why Brendan for me was a no-brainer in the respect of that. Does it does he suit the style? Even though it's going to be slightly different, but he knows the pressures that go along with being the manager of Celtic. But also he knows the fact that you've got to go in there and win games, and how you win games, but also knows how important the recruitment behind them. Because the manager's job now is difficult to do at all, especially at big clubs in the amount of games you have. So there'll be things in there, structure he players in for you. There's group one he players, there's group two he players. These are the ones we maybe not be able to afford, and then you move down and you hopefully drop onto one that, oh, there's surprises here, and we could be able to get him. And that's what Celtic will be looking at it. doesn't matter what market you're in. And there's only certain markets. Rob, I was, I was saying to the boys last week, you go to the National League in England and they're getting more than players outside Celtic and Rangers. Yeah. The National League. That's what you're competing with. That's fact. And some yeah. of them are part-time, by the way. Yeah. So it's very, very different. And that's why I say about the managers up here shouldn't get a lot of criticism when you see other players down south. They can go and get, yeah, they can, but they can't afford them because they couldn't bring them up here because the players wouldn't come up for it. And mm. that's in the National League. Never mind the. I'm not, I'm not even talking about the conference. I'm talking about the one below it, and that is the problem you have. So that's why we have to go abroad and go to these different countries. And listen, the quality that's come into Celtic, and you obviously these boys, and every one of them has been a superstar, really, you know, because they've all come in and grabbed it. And the one thing I notice about them, even at the side of the pitch, prior to games and after games, the professionalism they show, the, the, the simple things like their warm up, how they go about their business, mm. to make sure they're in tip top condition whether they're cooling down or whether they're warming up prior to a match they're out there before their teammates doing all that. So the small details, mm -hmm. you know, are so, so important and probably Ange knew all that and that's how important it is and they bought into the Celtic thing right away. And listen, long may it continue, as I said, there'll be a star and obviously that opens the door for everybody else because you see that quality coming through. Yeah. So I'm sure Rangers will be looking in that direction as well now, mm -hmm. you know, because they're thinking if Celtic can afford that, we can maybe afford that. So you maybe see that crossing over again they're ending up going for the same players yeah. because of the quality that these boys have shown and great credit to but listen long may it continue we want top quality players in the Scottish game so everybody enjoys it and what you're talking about there Peter is one reason just one reason that it all went so well for Hans Postacoglu in his time at Celtic his knowledge of the players his knowledge of their culture his knowledge of how they prepared for games and how they recovered from games and all the, all those fine details that, that, are, that are so important and that's key when you're making these signings isn't it how you know and the question would be how well does Michael Beal know the players he's bringing in the, not just the type of player he is the type of person he is the attitude and whether he's going to mix in to the dressing room well I said many times unfortunately I played with some guys the jersey was too big in the respect of that because they came but they'd never played under the intensity we were fortunate enough we were brought up as, as kids as supporters and whatever knew the pressures that went along even though it was hard to handle at times there's no doubt of that but some guys are not used to that and, and can't and it wasn't down to their quality I used to see them in training and think they were brilliant mm -hmm. and could see why the manager brought them but then come a Saturday or a Tuesday they really struggled because of the intensity they didn't realise you'd live 24-7 yeah. you know being a Celtic player so, as in such so I'm sure Ange looked at a lot of things there, and that's why you've got to give the likes of Jota and that great credit you see them mixing in the town getting into the town which is very unusual for players and fans and that to be together which used to be the normal for us mm -hmm. you know and, and to do that and mix that culture and listen the amount of rain we have in Scotland everybody talks about oh, will they be able to play in the rain will they be able to go to Ross <laughs> County when it's cold and these guys proved it no yeah. problem to them and that's great credit but only the insight for the manager was the one that was going to do that and you're 100% right on that It is all very intriguing uh, and continues to be so in the, the days and the weeks leading up to the start of the new season Peter always a pleasure thank that's you very right. much indeed Mark Guidi is here with me uh, tomorrow night next up on Go Joe Kilday after this The Go Radio Football Show The countdown to the new season is underway. Let's go!